this video we're going to be covering absolute uncertainties the third part of our video series if you've been watching all along thank you so much and i hope you're liking this video series so far and if you want access again to the document that i'm presenting with you can just access it the link is in the description below we talked before that you're supposed to calculate and record values um for c for example for t for log m for log l all of that now you always see a part that follows underneath when you're doing paper 5 question 2 that says include the absolute uncertainties. So it's always going to be for one quantity. If you've noticed that, it's always going to be for one quantity, not both, just one, right? So it always be include absolute uncertainties for T, include absolute uncertainties for log L, include absolute uncertainties for this, for this, for this, for this, for that. So the other mark you get will be for including those absolute uncertainties and the model is always as follows for that question. So, for uncertainties, there's a format that you must follow so you can answer a lot of questions. And I've done the liberty of categorizing all the different kinds of questions that you'll see in most questions. And trust me, by the end of this video, you won't need any other video on absolute uncertainty. So, we have three methods. Um, the first one is the traditional calculation method, right? I call this the traditional one because it's, it's in the past. You've done this in AS before. So, this is A2. Just sort of just now trying to sort of catch up um, and, 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 and calculate this thing. So let's start with a recap on the rules for uncertainties that we will use for the questions that we will see. The absolute uncertainty, what is it? Right? So an absolute uncertainty is a range within which the true value of the quantity being measured will lie. So let us say, for example, that you measure the length of a table, right? You don't know if it's actually 80 pen zero. So you have a table, you measure the length, you don't know if it's 80 pen zero centimeters. So you give yourself a range. Well, my answer might lie between 60 pen zero and 100 pen zero centimeters. So you're, you're very unsure, right? But what you're basically saying is, I don't know what the true answer is, but I expect it to lie in this range. What I'm getting is okay, I'm uncertain about it and in this case you're not really sure because your range is plus or minus 20 that's what we call an absolute uncertainty so to quote it for example I could say my length is 150 centimeters plus or minus 0 0.5 centimeters this means that the true value of the table is expected to lie between 149.5 and 150.5 centimeters that's basically what I call uncertainties now um, with some, uh, some rules that you must be aware of, and we're going to just rush through those because we've done them in AS. This is just a little bit of a recap. If x is equals to y plus z, or if x is equals to y minus z, if you're given an equation that if two quantities adding up, it can be d squared is equals to z plus f squared, for example, or d squared is equals to z squared minus f. Who knows? The absolute uncertainty in x, right? is just the sum of the absolute uncertainties in y and z. So delta x will be equal to delta y plus delta z. As simple as that, right? So if I'm asked to find the absolute uncertainty in x, given those two formulas, either addition or subtraction, I'm going to just add the absolute uncertainties. Why am I doing this? Because you're uncertain that it's actually y by this amount. You're uncertain that it's z is actually correct by that amount. So the total will be how uncertain you are about the output that you're getting. But the rules flip a little bit and they become a little bit interesting when we have a multiplication and division. So if we say x is goes to y times z or x is goes to y over z, the fractional uncertainty in x is now the sum of the fractional uncertainties in y and z. Again, if it doesn't make sense, just put it in the comment section and I'll be able to address that. But basically what we're saying is delta x over x is equals to delta y over y plus delta z over x over z then we can now make delta uh, x the subject of formula by just multiplying both sides by x and we can be able to find the absolute uncertainty in delta x now the problem with this formula or with this uh, thinking becomes most students end up confusing the two we are adding fractional uncertainties when we have division and multiplication but when we have addition we're just adding the absolute uncertainties why do we do that I honestly don't know but all i know is you get different answers if you do that so just stick to that and if i find a reason i'll be i'll be happy to, to share with you guys um if you have x to the x is equals to y to the power of n uh, where n is a constant the fractional uncertainty in x how do you get it well it's basically the fractional uncertainty in x is n times the fractional uncertainty in y because saying y to the power of n is like repeated multiplication right y squared is y times y so you just have to say delta y over y plus delta y over y, but that's just two times delta y over y. So basically delta x over x will be equal to n delta y over y. So if you have a power, 
for example t squared right y is equals to t squared just say 2 delta t over t and you'll be times y and you'll be able to get delta y that's basically what i mean by that so that's the traditional method if you have those things in mind for example let's go with the first one um example from may june our first example from february march 2018 question paper 52 um we have r with i and we've been asked to quote 1 over i in upper empire um and quote it with the absolute uncertainties so in, to include the values of that we can see that i has 3 sf so saying 1 over that we get 5150 um that's 3 sf remember the zero i said is insignificant so you want to figure out what the uncertainty actually is now how is this going to work to make it easier just make the expression um you know different so that it makes sense so in this case i said let y is equals to 1 over i so I just want to conceptualize and understand that, right? So I just said let y is goes to 1 over i. So you can definitely see, like from what I said, this is just division. Delta y over y is goes to delta i over i. So delta y will be equal to y times delta i over i. But remember y is 1 over i. So delta 1 over i, absolute uncertainty in 1 over i, would therefore be just delta y. So it would just be 1 over i times uh, delta i over i. Delta i, you're already given cu uh, current with your absolute uncertainty. So in this case, I'm just saying 1 over 144 times 10 to the power of negative 6 times 2 times 10 to the power of negative 6 over 144 times 10 to the power of negative 6. I get a delta y in that particular case of um, 996.45. So I'm doing the last example where I had uh, my i being 144, right? So you can see that from that example, I got 96.45 and I quoted it as 90, right? Like I said, 90 is 1 SF because it consists of 1, uh, 9, and then the 0 is insignificant, right? And this is 1 significant as per our rule. But what do I mean as per our rule? Let me give you the rule. For uncertainties, the rule is simple. The number of significant figures must be 1 SF at times 2. Please be in mind, the rule uh, should always be taken note of sometimes 2sf will help us in ensuring that the decimal points on the uncertainty and the actual values are equal so for example i could say 20.0 plus or minus 1.3 right you can see that i have 2sf on my uncertainty because i'm just trying to match the decimal points but never say 70.0 plus or minus 10.0 that's 3sf rather say 70.0 plus or minus 10 much more ideal for you to do that um but always 1SF is the ideal rule. So remember, if you're finding uncertainties using the traditional method, we're going to do that. And you must always quote it as 1SF or 2SF. And your raw data is going to follow the rules that I gave you in the last video for completing the table. Next up, we have winter 2024 question paper 5.2. We're given values of theta and 1 over sine squared theta, actually. And we've been asked to calculate and record values of d squared and include the absolute uncertainties in d squared. Okay, so like I've said, just square the value of d, you've completed the table. In that case, you get 615. Now, d squared is 615.04. So, delta d squared over d squared. Remember this d squared? Like I said, if x is equal to y to the power of n, it's n delta y over y. So, in this case, delta d squared over d squared because x is equal to d squared, um, is equal to 2 times delta d over d. So delta d squared will be equal to d squared times 2 times delta d over d. Then now just substitute 24.8 squared times 2 times 0 0.2 over 24.8, and you get approximately 10. If you round it off to 1SF, that's going to be approximately 10. Why 1SF? Like I said, uncertainties always, guys, 1SF or 2SF. And if you have notes, write this down. Right, write this down. Um, last example, if I give you x is equal to wl, that's from um, winter 2015, question paper 5.2. If x is equal to wl, um, delta x over x, again, that's multiplication, will be equal to delta w over w plus delta l over l. Multiply both sides by x. Plug in your values, you get 0 0.00230. Because it's 10 to the power of negative 2, you have 0 0.23. And consequently what you've gotten is two significant figures which is aligning with the number of significant uh 
figures that we have just talked about, right? Either 1SF or 2SF. And I put 2 to be fancy so that it aligns with the decimal places on 4.80. That's the rule. Right? Another completely different example is there are instances where you have other complicated equations that you can use. Let's look at an example. So let's assume an equation that said v is equal to 2 pi r over t. And now it is simplified to this equation where we have v squared is equal to 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. And you've been asked to find uncertainties in the value of delta v. This is an actual literal Cambridge exam. I'm showing it right now on the screen. The, it asks you to find ablus, uh, uncertainties in delta v squared, right? What you're going to notice is you have an equation with 4 pi squared. Constants don't really have uncertainties. Why are you uncertain about something that's constant? You can't be, right? R was your radius, but Cambridge is very clever, guys. Unless, I repeat, unless they tell you that they're uncertain about a certain value, don't assume. Don't assume that they're uncertain that the answer is this, right? So in the above example, the radius was given in meters. So I did not assume, for example, that the uncertainty is 0 0.001 because the question did not tell me that. So never make assumptions about uncertainties in questions, but always use the rules that I gave you. So in that case, I can therefore see, huh, I was given time and then delta t was for one oscillation. So delta t will be equal to delta uh, t, the small t, divided by 10, right? Where delta t is the uncertainty and the total time for 10 oscillations. So in that case, I had plus or minus 0 0.2. So in this case, I'll have 0 0.02 being my absolute uncertainty in delta t. So if I want to find delta v squared, I'll just say delta v squared over v squared is equal to 2 times big delta t over t. And that's it then you're able to get your uncertainties in delta v squared. Does that make sense? I hope I'm not moving too fast. Um, the second categories that you're going to meet of equations are what you call uncertainties with logarithms or other calculations. So some questions will contain logarithms, right? And you must be able to calculate the uncertainties for those kind of questions. I will lead you through an example to process, uh, through an example on how to calculate them. Um, the example is from um, May-June 2022, question paper 5-2. We're given L is equal to SKT to the power of A. Values of T and L were given in that particular table. And we're asked to calculate and record values of log T and log L in that particular table. We did that. And then we're now asked to include the absolute uncertainties in the value of log L. How do we do that? Tricky, 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 tricky. But below are the steps that you must follow to solve all the problems that involve logarithms. Number one, start by identifying the actual value of L. In this case, it was 2.9 plus or minus 0 0.2. So that's 2.9 times 10 to the power of 30. The uncertainty in L, I identify that as well. That's plus or minus 0 0.02 times 10 to the power of 30. So you're going to find the maximum value of L. Right? How do you get that? You take the uncertainty and you add L. So you have L plus delta L. So if delta L is 0 0.2, you're basically just adding 0 0.2 to 2.9. You're going to get 3.1 times 10 to the power of 30. Then you're going to find the minimum value of L. Take the original value, subtract the absolute uncertainty, and you're going to get 2.7 times 10 to the power of 30. So you can have those three things, um, minimum value and maximum value. And you're going to go on and um, compute log L, log L max, and log L min. So just take the l maximum value of L you have, find the logarithm for that. The minimum value of L that you have, find the logarithm for that. The actual value of L that you have, also find the logarithm for that. And then to find your uncertainty in log L, you have three methods. Number one, you could either say half log max minus log min. Right, so half the maximum calculation minus the minimum calculation, or you could say the maximum calculation log L max minus log L um, over. That's the number one, right? Log L max minus log L, and the last one is log L, the actual value, minus log L min, the minimum value of log L. Right, those are the three methods that you can be able to use. Right, again, try that uh, to solve one of those questions. So I'm going to give you time to solve that. So take log, take find the maximum value, take the logarithm for that. Um, remember it's saying L times 10 to the power of 30, so you don't really need to say times 10 to the power of 30. You're just taking 2.9 as is. So say log 3.1 
try to find out what answer you get. Say log 2.7, try to find the answer that you get, subtract the 2, half of that, and you'll see that you get 0 0.03, right? And try that again for the other one and see if you get 0 0.02. If you don't understand it, again, just put it in the comment section and I'll be happy to address that. Um, so, whenever you're given such questions with calculations, just find the maximum possible value and find the minimum possible value and your uncertainty will be half the range or it will be um, the maximum minus the actual or the actual minus the minimum. Another example can be if I give you y is equal to e to the power of x, for example, and I, I give you x as this number plus or minus that thing and I ask you to find the uncertainty in e to the power of x. What you're going to do, again, compute e to the power of x, put the maximum by adding the uncertainty. Compute the minimum by subtracting the uncertainty and your uncertainty will be one half of uh, y max, the maximum value, minus the minimum value or the actual minus the minimum or the maximum minus the minimum, whatever works for you. I'm still totally okay with that. Or you can have trigonometric expressions, for example, sine x, and you also find its absolute uncertainty, but they've only given you the value of x. So what you're going to do again is find x max, find x min, and sine x max, you can find that, sine x min, you can find that, and half the range will be that. Do you get the idea? So basically, this is how you find uncertainties for everything using the range method and all the calculations that you're ever going to encounter. Then the last part will be uncertainties when given two readings. So there are questions where you'll be asked to find the average value, for example. So in these cases, you should be able to use the uncertainty um, using a particular method. What do I mean by that? Um, let's go to winter 2021, question paper 5-2. Um, the two measurements of the thickness are T1 and T2. Values of T1 and T2 and R are given in the table. So you have values of T1 and T2. So the average is just adding those two and dividing by two. So now you're asked to include absolute uncertainties in the average. Again, the method is the same. Uncertainty is half the range, right? Half the biggest value minus the smallest value. And you should be able to get your uncertainty. So in that case, half the maximum value of T, 0 0.19 minus 0 0.13. You get half of that, you get 0 0.06. That's half of it, 0 0.03, and that's your uncertainty. So basically, for these kind of uncertainties, you just be given two columns. Who knows? Maybe they might give you three, right? But the rule is still the same. Just look for the maximum value and the minimum value, and the uncertainty will just be half the range. This concludes the different kind of uncertainties that you will ever encounter. Remember, this is just a guide. So it is highly likely that you encounter different scenarios. So just remain flexible and adapt when new scenarios arise. Okay, uh, we'll move on to plotting a graph in the next video. So I hope this video makes sense, right? I always get a lot of questions about uncertainties and I hope if you're following this video step by step, writing notes, you are able to understand how this question should be solved. And I hope to meet you guys in the next video right here where we'll be talking about plotting a graph and how do you do that? How do you use those values? And uh, hopefully that will be helpful.